this, the engineering or the physicality of this stitch and the way it's, it interacts with itself, it can move. It has movement in it. It can like um, contract and stretch out because of this zigzag shape that we're creating. Um, so that's why it's good for stretch fabric and elastics and jerseys and stuff. I'll edge right here. Oops. Okay, so this is going from left to right. If you're right-handed like me, this is the direction that you're going to be working in. If you're left-handed, you're going to want to go opposite. Um, so just apply the same technique, but go the other direction. We are combining a zigzag stitch with a small back stitch at every point of your zigzag. So this first one, I'm, I'm moving down. I already made my back tack to secure my thread. This first one, I'm just picking up. I'm not going through the exterior layer. You do not want to have this showing on the other side. The only thing that should show on this other side is when you go up to the top part of your zigzag. So only catch the first one or two layers depending on if you have a single fold or a double fold. Do not pick up that bottom layer of fabric. So you see I came down in this V shape, I made a back tack, meaning I went in the opposite direction that I'm moving in, come down in a V, pick up your yarns in this opposite direction. Now you can go up to your top of your V. This is where you're catching the yarns of your underneath layer, which is ultimately the, the good side of your garment. So the other side of this would be the outside of the garment where everybody can see. This would be the inside where we're working. So that's our first zigzag. Come back down, only pick up a couple of yarns of the first layer or the first two layers if you did a double fold like I did. And I did that back stitch motion. And then I'm going to travel back up to catch a couple yarns of the face of my garment. So these stitches at the top of your zigzag, those will be the only stitches you should see on the outside, the good side of your garment. This should be a consistent size, both dimensions, length, and depth. And like I said before with other stitches, figure out what is making, what action is making what part of your stitch. So I can tell that when I'm making my next stitch, I want to be about this low to be in line with this guy, and I want to be about this far away to be the same shape as this guy. So about right there is where I want to enter. Only the top layers with that little back stitch. Come back up to grab a few yarns of the base layer. Notice how much I'm needing to fix my thread. This is how you should do too. If your thread is not behaving perfectly, you need to fix it. You need to adjust it. You be the boss of the stitches happening. Every element of this you control. So it should be exactly what you intend it should be to be, okay? It should look how you want it. 
the thread should act how you want it. So just figure out what it takes to make your threads even out. Okay, we just did the little back stitch right here. I'm coming back up, making the top point. I'm also doing that back stitch motion at the top. So both, both the top and the bottom get this reverse direction of stitch. That's the back stitch part of this. So I did that back stitch at the bottom. Now I'm going to come to the base layer and do that same back stitch motion at the top, only picking up a few yarns. Okay, and this is what it should look like on the good side of your garment. You should just see these itty bitty stitches. That's what I picked up at the top of my zigzag, okay? Right, that's your catch stitch.